decimated the Archdemon in Origins and slapped around the Darkspawn in Awakening, but Dragon Age 2 tells a different kind of tale. BioWare's latest entry into their fantasy RPG franchise addresses a number of gameplay problems that the original games have and tells a very interesting story to boot. And while not everything is rosy in the land of Kirkwall, memorable characters and a twisting narrative make this a great addition to the series. Dragon Age 2's story is told in a unique way. Right from the start, you are told that your character, Hawk, will eventually become the champion of Kirkwall and that the world is on the brink of war. The narrative is spun backwards by Hawk's dwarf friend, Varric, as he's being interrogated by the dominant religious group called the Chantry. Parts of the narrative do seem a little pointless when you're going through it, but eventually it builds into something great, although it does sort of end on a cliffhanger, making the whole thing seem kind of more like a prologue than it should. While the story is good, some of the best writing is found in the background chatter between party members. These interactions are often hilarious, and sometimes even heartwarming. Never mind their weirdly stiff animations, these characters will grow on you the more you talk to them. Taking a step in the Mass Effect direction, the main character is fully voiced in Dragon Age 2, which means you can actually hear your dialogue decisions play out, and that's always a win in my book. Leave him. The Darkspawn are gaining by the minute. In terms of graphics, the game definitely looks pretty, but it isn't as polished as it could be. The entire adventure pretty much takes place in one city, and because of this, a number of assets are reused over and over again. As nice as it looks, it can get tiresome to keep seeing the same sights. At the start of the game, you're given the choice of making a male or female, human mage, rogue, or warrior. Each has their strengths and weaknesses, but all of them are pretty fun to play. The combat is a little different depending on if you play it on consoles or PC. The console versions are better with an action focus, while PC players can use a more strategic approach. That's not to say you can't use strategy on the consoles, it's just harder to position people with analog sticks. Regardless of which version you choose, you can always pause the action and give your companions specific commands. Attack animations have been sped and spiffed up, and slicing through an enemy with a sword feels really satisfying. However, there are a few problems. The first being that although it was touted as a mercurial storyline, the game is fairly linear. While there are several decisions that impact the story, it doesn't change things as much as I'd hoped. Of all of Bioware's titles, I felt like this one was an opportunity to go crazy with branching storylines, but it doesn't. Without giving anything away, I still really enjoyed the story, and there are a number of crazy moments that'll make you go OMG and WTF. Your companions can also be slightly dense. Bioware said that Dragon Age 2 can be played like a straight action game, but that isn't quite the case. Party members aren't smart enough to take care of themselves unless you set up specific tactics for the character to follow. And even then, sometimes it seems like they'd rather die instead. Not a huge deal, but it'll be annoying for those who just want to focus on killing things. Despite a few missteps, Dragon Age 2 is still a great RPG. The characters are delightful, and though the storyline is more linear than what I was hoping for, the game is faster paced and tighter than previous games, making this one more enjoyable to play than the rest of the series. If you can look past the repetitive assets, there are lots of crazy things that happen in Kirkwall. It's one game that I can't wait to play over and over. For more on all things Dragon Age 2, be sure to check out IGN.com.